Crypto invalidates the money narrative. Notes from the edge of the narrative matrix. It's trippy how a government that's been democratically elected by free people behaves in exactly the same way you'd expect a government to behave if it was run by corporations. I just cannot understand how we keep failing to solve the world's problems using a system of making as much money as you can while paying your workers as little as you can and offloading as many of your costs onto the biosphere as possible. Propaganda is the answer to most important political questions. Why are things so fucked? Propaganda. Why do people keep supporting corrupt parties and voting for corrupt assholes? Propaganda. Why is there no anti-war movement? Propaganda. Why don't the people rise up? Propaganda. What is the functional difference between a regime which directly censors the internet to prevent dissent and a regime which works with Silicon Valley plutocrats to control information via algorithms and has institutional safeguards which prevent dissent from having any effect? You don't actually have free speech in your country if there are mountains of institutional roadblocks set up to prevent anyone from using their speech to affect meaningful political changes. It doesn't matter what you're allowed to say if it doesn't matter what you say. Oh, I can say whatever I want in my country. Yeah, you can say whatever you want in a desert island, too. And because your status quo is locked in place in countless ways, it will make the same amount of difference. Wikipedia is just as aggressively manipulated by imperial narrative managers as news media and social media. Whoever controls the narrative about the world controls the world itself. The financial elite hate crypto not because crypto itself poses a threat to their empire, but because its existence is destroying trust and belief in the realness narrative of money among regular people. Bitcoin is imaginary, but it's worth real money. Why? Because money is also imaginary. The complexity of the markets is absolutely essential in controlling the narrative around why a few live like kings while the rest work like slaves just to keep a roof over their heads. You, regular person, are not meant to understand it, because if you did, it could not continue. If you define crypto as shares, it makes it more clear that shares don't need to be based in any kind of physical reality in order to create value in a market-based system. Crypto as currency makes it clear that currency doesn't need the trade of a national economy to back it. Crypto shows that it's all made up. This whole psychopathic numbers game where the digits in your bank app dictate whether you live or die, or the digits on spreadsheets dictate whether we avoid near-term extinction or not. It's all made up. And we can change it whenever we like. I've always hated Monopoly. What a tedious, vindictive waste of a perfectly good afternoon. I am so pissed off that we're going extinct over what essentially is just a global game of Monopoly that virtually none of us want to play. In the escalations between the US and China, one is the aggressor and the other is acting defensively. You can tell which is which by asking yourself how the other would react if the situation was reversed. How would the US react if China was surrounding the US with military bases? People say that military presence is to protect China's neighbors from Chinese aggression. Well, look up USA's murderous interventions in Central and South America. China would be far more justified setting up a military presence to protect nations like Cuba and Venezuela. Yet it doesn't. This means between the US Power Alliance and China, Washington is the aggressor and Beijing is acting defensively in response to that aggression. The reason Western news media do not report on these escalations in this way is because Western news media is propaganda. When you're used to being in power, a movement toward equality can feel like a personal attack. Marginalized groups being elevated gets turned into, there's a war on white men. China refusing to let the U.S. rule the world gets turned into, China's trying to take over the world. That there would be a second Cold War was guaranteed after the success of the first one. If your empire succeeded in attaining global hegemony in a game of subversion and manipulation which happened to greatly enrich your military-industrial complex, why wouldn't you do it again? I mean, sure, you're gambling the life of every terrestrial organism every day you roll the dice on brinkmanship with nuclear-armed nations, 
but you wind up sitting pretty if your gamble pays off and the world doesn't get incinerated. It's a no-brainer for people with no brains. Seems like every country on Earth gets compared to Nazi Germany, except the imperialist one that's been slaughtering people by the millions to conquer the world because it believes it's exceptional. Things are so deeply, deeply fucked in so very, very many ways. And they are getting worse so very, very fast. And because status quo narrative control is so effective, hardly anyone is even aware of this. If humanity makes it out of this mess alive, it will look like a miracle. But also, there is so very, very much we do not understand, and humans have so very, very much untapped potential we simply haven't woken up to yet. There is plenty of room for future miracles to be hiding in all that space. We are where we are because of our collective conditioned behavioral patterns. Any movement away from our self-destructive patterning will necessarily come from an unpatterned direction, and will therefore be unexpected and unanticipated. That's why it will look like a miracle. We go on because we go on. Because our heart keeps beating and our lungs keep inhaling, and because the human organism is deeply hardwired to desire life, and because life is beautiful and delightful. We fight on because what the hell else are we going to do? As power-driven agendas of global conquest give rise to international propaganda wars that are increasingly turning our information ecosystem into white noise and indecipherable gibberish, people may soon cease looking outside themselves for truth and begin looking within. This could change everything.